Hello friends, welcome to this uh, lecture. Today we are going to discuss regarding the concept infiltration. Now friends you know when the precipitation takes place, the some water that works or that runs on the ground as a surface runoff, some water uh, that enters into the ground which we will call it as an infiltration. And there is a one more term which is associated with this which is percolation. So we are going to also see what is the difference between the infiltration and what is percolation. Today regarding the infiltration, what are the various aspects that we are going to study? Those are infiltration and percolation, distribution of soil moisture, infiltration capacity, factors affecting to infiltration, measurement of infiltration, infiltration indices. Now what is infiltration? How we can define the infiltration? It is defined as the downward movement of water from soil surface into the soil mass through pores of soil. So in the picture you can see here the precipitation has taken place then some water has uh, uh, reached in the more amount in the downward direction on and on some part of the this ground in the little quantity it is trying to reach to the uh, ground below. So you can see here there is a less infiltration in the non-porous soils and rocks okay when the hard stratum is there so there will be less infiltration but when more infiltration in uh, porous soils or rock. When the uh, strata is porous, so the infiltration will be more. Okay, so this uh, is a very simple concept. Now, who invented the the concept infiltration? You know, Robert Horton, who was an American geologist, while working on his uh, project, he recovered the term infiltration. So infiltration term first used by Hutton in 1935 to describe the phenomena of soaking water into the soil. Now again as I discussed earlier, what is the difference between infiltration and per percolation? Infiltration, the entry of water into the soil through the soil surface. What is percolation? The process of downward movement of water into soil once water enters into the soil. So uh, even though the infiltration stop, remember the percolation takes place. So uh, two statements are here important. When percolation stop, infiltration also stop. Okay. When uh, infiltration stop, percolation is continuing. Okay. So in spite of the infiltration uh, is over, uh, percolation is still in continue that uh, movement of water in the downward direction. Now this uh, uh, figure, okay, where uh, we can uh, distribute the this uh, particular phenomena in the four zones of this infiltration. Now this is the uh, topmost, which is the moisture is present there, or you can say the uh, water is there. Okay, and uh, in the downward direction, this, this, the depth is shown here. Okay, and this is the wetting front of that. So four zones you can observe in the soil. First one is the saturation zone, transition zone. Third one is the transmission zone, and fourth is the wetting zone. So zone wise, you can say uh, it is very quite clear that when the water is uh, uh, moving in a downward direction, topmost is uh, it is observed as saturation zone. Then, uh, when water again movement starts in below, okay, there is a in between uh, these two zones, the transition zone is there where the water is trying to move there, uh, bring this water in a downward direction. Transmission zone, okay, where the uh, good amount of movement is there, and when the water is uh, at the bottom, okay, the waiting zone is there. So zone 1 is at top, a thin layer of saturated zone is created. Then zone 2, it is beneath zone 1 and there is a transition zone in between these two. 
zone 3 the next lower zone is the transmission zone where the downward motion of moisture takes place the moisture contained in this zone is above field capacity but uh, below saturation further it is characterized by unsaturated flow and fairly uniform moisture content okay then what about the this zone number 4 zone 4 is the last zone is the wetting zone the soil moisture in this zone will be at or near field capacity or the moisture content decreases with the depth the boundary of the wetting zone is a wetting front where a sharp discontinu discontinuity exists between the newly wet soil and original moisture content of the soil depending upon the amount of infiltration and physical properties of soil the wetting front can extend from few centimeters to two meters okay so remember this regarding the wetting front as well now here a simple model has been shown here regarding the to understand the concept okay you if you consider a uh, if you consider a one uh, conduit or pipe is there which is provided with the here at the screen okay or pores are provided here on that okay and if you are pouring the water here or the water inflow is shown here so what will happen so all the water will not enter into the pipe right or in the whatever the this conduit is there so the water will be this will be moving away okay that will be flowing uh, through this particular surface and some water will enter so we will call this as a, a infiltration right and that will uh, ultimately goes to the store right what is infiltration capacity the maximum rate at which soil can absorb the water is known as infiltration capacity. What is field capacity? The volume of water that ground or soil can hold is called as field capacity. Okay, so, the difference you remember what is the infiltration capacity and field capacity. Now again to understand this infiltration capacity or the field capacity a very simple uh, figure is shown here the three or different strata have shown in the figure sand, silt and clay. Okay, If you see the sand and uh, this you treat it as a precipitation so water is uh, moving into the sandy soil right. So maximum water will get infiltrate because the pores are present more right. So, if you move on the silt side, okay, comparison with the sandy soil, the pores are less, okay. So, the some water will move here, right, and infiltration will be less in comparison with the sandy soil. Again, you move to the clay soil, more dense soil is there. So, there is an inter voids are very less. So, what I have all? infiltration will be less and water will be flowing. Uh, uh, away from this maximum water will flow uh, as a runoff there right infiltration capacity which will we are uh, giving the i can say noting that as a f the maximum rate at which water can enter into soil in a given condition is infiltration capacity f f is infiltration capacity f a actual rate of infiltration i intensity of rainfall so please remember this uh, terminology so that we can understand the concept more clear right actual rate of infiltration f a is equal to infiltration capacity f when i is greater than or equal to f so inf intensity of rainfall is greater than or equal to the infiltration capacity then second uh, statement you can see actual rate of infiltration f a is equal to intensity of rainfall i where i is less than f so intensity of rainfall is less than infiltration capacity now next concept is there infiltration capacity curve 
so you can see also this curve where the uh, it is plotted on x axis as a time in the hour on y axis it is f in centimeter per hour right and you can observe this particular as a this standard infiltration capacity curve so if you see the if suppose the soil is dry in that case what will happen the infiltration in the initial stage will be more it is clear and as the time passes so that infiltration will be getting reduced right so that if you are moving towards the other time you can see so that will move uh, that will be get reduced as the time elapses right so infiltration occurs only after the interception and depression storage losses have been satisfied infiltration is high at the beginning of the storm when the soil is dry it decreases as the soil becomes saturated and ultimately approached a limiting constant value fc okay so you can see this is the fc after this it will remain constant right now what again two terms are there f not is initial infiltration capacity here you can see this f not at this position that will be max maximum you can see fc limiting constant value of infiltration right so an ideal infiltration capacity curve proposed by hutton in 1933 that ft is equal to fc plus the bracket f not minus fc into e raised to minus kt that is a constant there factors affecting infiltration so these are the various factors which affect the infiltration that may vary the infiltration so what are those first one is the vege vegetation cover moisture content temperature intensity of rainfall human activity quality of water movement of man and animal presence of ground water table size and characteristics of soil particles so let's elaborate all these terms vegetation cover dense vegetation increase infiltration bare land will cause washing of fine particles of soil okay that is a clear uh, statement moisture content infiltration rate depends on initial moisture condition of soil when soil moisture is high infiltration rate is slow but soil moisture is low infiltration rate is high third is a temperature viscosity viscosity of water changes with temperature increase in temperature causes reduction in viscosity so infiltration is higher when temperature is high okay so viscosity is a term that we have studied in the fluid mechanics that you can understand so very important thing is that the infiltration is higher when the temperature is high intensity of rainfall high intensity rainfall cause mechanical compaction of soil so heavy intensity rainfall cause less infiltration lesser intensity rainfall cause higher infiltration next is human activity cultivation on bare land will increase infiltration construction of roads and buildings will decrease in infiltration capacity so you can see in the um, generally in the cities the infiltration is less that's why the uh, there is a depletion of the ground water that you can so as the extraction is more but the infiltration is less so that that problem is happening in the cities quality of water silt and other impurities in the water resulting in the reduction of infiltration next is the movement of man and animals heavy movements cause compaction of soil and that results less infiltration that you can understand that the, the compaction will takes place or uh, as the time passes the consolidation the natural process that will also increase there so the movement of man and animals that will affect the infiltration presence of ground water table if uh, ground water table is near to the earth surface it reduces infiltration 
capacity okay that may lead to the saturation remember if the ground water table is higher level okay so the infiltration will be less for infiltration to continue ground water table should not very close size and characteristics of soil particles infiltration is directly proportional to the grain size or grain diameter for granule size however if the soil has swelling minerals like elite or montmorillon light the infiltration rate will reduce drastically then very important concept measurement of infiltration rate field measurement of infiltration is done by the instruments known as infiltrometers there are two types of infiltrometers used one is single tube or single ring type infiltrometer second is double tube or double ring type infiltrometer okay let us see this now you can see single ring infiltrometer you can see the pipe is inserted in the ground okay what are the specifications material of ring that metal uh, cylinder ring diameter 30 cm is there so this leading diameter is 30 cm ring length 60 cm ring driven into the soil is 50 cm so this insertion is uh, 50 cm water level maintain 5 cm you can see here above the ground level 5 cm water level is maintained the volume of water added during different time intervals the plot of infiltration capacity versus time is obtained uniform infiltration is obtained after 2 to 3 hours what is the drawback infiltrated water spreads at the bottom of ring so that because of the as uh, the water has moves in the downward direction that moves uh, away from this so the effectiveness of this test is little bit less so we'll see the video on this as well uh, you can see here the pictorial view of the infiltrometer so where this uh, conduit has been fixed or you can say so it is uh, inserted in ground right now this is a upgraded version of single ring infiltrometer the main drawback of drawback of single ring infiltrometer is rectified in this uh, infiltrometer uh, as it consists of two concentric hollow rings driven into soil uniformly without any tilt and, and uh, disturbing the soil okay so you can see the inner diameter of this uh, uh, first one this, this ring is 30 uh, cm the outer is a 60 cm and the measurement will taken at the central or you can see the inner ring okay you can see the plan of this here the measurement arrangement is here so the strain is provided here at this so this is outer cylinder then this is inner cylinder a perforated metal plate uh, is provided here so that what will happen so in the uh, single ring infiltrometer it was if only we are only single uh, this conduit we are for pipe is inserted there so the water movement was there and that was uh, the you can see the effective unit test was of less but here you can see that will be uh, already taken care of that so we what we are doing we are keeping this particular outer area also we are there and we are taking the readings at the center okay so we'll uh, see the video of this as well how the test is conducted now you can see uh, this is the uh, uh, the view has been shown here of these two Uh, uh, rings are there so say at the central ring we are taking the readings so material of ring is a metal cylinder ring diameter is 30 cm and uh, 60 cm ring length is 25 cm ring driven into soil is 15 cm water level maintained above the uh, ground level is 5 cm the water in both the rings should be kept the same during the observation period measurement is inserted in the ground this is the measurement arrangement and in the double ring okay we are taking the uh, reading in the in uh, inner tube or inner ring there okay so two rings are inserted in the ground okay so so please remember this two types of infiltrometer now let's move to the next concept infiltration indices infiltration capacity of soil does not remain constant 
इन हाइड्रोलॉजिकल कॉम्पिटिशन फॉर कॉम्पिटिंग सरफेस रन ऑफ एंड फ्लड डिस्चार्ज द यूज ऑफ इनफिल्ट्रेशन कैपेसिटी कर्व इज नॉट कन्वीनियंट इट इज मोर कन्वीनियंट टू यूज एन एवरेज कॉन्स्टेंट वैल्यू ऑफ इनफिल्ट्रेशन रेट ओके सो वॉट दैट एवरेज वैल्यू ऑफ इनफिल्ट्रेशन रेट दैट विल सी बट दिस इज द हाइड्रोग्राफ प्लॉटेड हियर ओके सो कैन सी टू स्टड अंडरस्टैंड दिस एवरेज वैल्यू और कॉन्स्टेंट इनफिल्ट्रेशन रेट यू कैन सी initially uh, this infiltration uh, the infiltration is more and that goes uh, on reducing or decreasing as the time elapses right so on the x axis what is uh, uh, plotted time is in hours and on uh, this y axis infiltration rate in uh, mm per hours right the hydrograph is plotted this is the net storm rain and you can see uh, this particular uh, reduction in the infiltration this is this is called as the infi infiltration regime but uh, what we are going to use we have to considering this the uh, constant infiltration rate or you can see the average infiltration rate infiltration indices the average constant rate of infiltration is known as the infiltration indices there are two infiltration indices first is the phi index and second is w index the first one is a phi index so if you see the hydrograph here okay which is plotted against again the time in uh, minutes or hour on x axis and y axis okay rainfall intensity in mm per hour okay as the graph is get a your shaded area here and this is the at this you can see it is a average uh, infiltration rate below this right so uh, it is uh, the average rate of rainfall above which the rainfall volume is equal to the surface run off volume so phi is equal to p minus r divided by te phi is equal to phi index is uh, in centimeter per hour so p is the total rainfall in centimeter r is run off in centimeter and what is te time period for rainfall excess in hours okay so please remember this then again uh, uh, to uh, get the more re idea regarding this by referring the same graph for determination of phi index a horizontal line is drawn on a hydrograph such that the shaded area above that line is equal to the volume of surface runoff so on this above that uh, it is this is totally a surface runoff the unshaded uh, area below the horizontal line actually represents the all losses including interception depression storage and infiltration but it is assumed that all these losses are due to infiltration only this is very important in the paragraph and all of you remember this what is mentioned for this particular unshaded area what is written the unshaded area below the horizontal line actually represents all losses and what are those interception depression storage and infiltration but what we are saying that it is because of infiltration only so this is a very important uh, factor that we have to remember the amount of rainfall in excess of phi index is called as rainfall excess this statement also remember application of phi index it can be used to estimate surface runoff from a given hydrograph it is specially useful for predicting the infiltration from a storm occurring over a large basin it is also useful for the unit hydrograph analysis to determine the pattern of rainfall excess okay so we are going to study also the unit hydrographs w index w index the average rate of infiltration during the period when the rainfall intensity exceeds the infiltration rate the w index is equal to p minus r minus s divided by t what is p p is the total rainfall in centimeter r is total runoff in centimeter s is total losses in centimeter t is total time period in r so w index is the average rate of infiltration what is unit centimeter per hour okay so please remember this term now w index is more accurate than phi index 
because the interception and differential losses which are considered as a part of infiltration thus w index is always less than phi index it is difficult to estimate interception and differential losses w index is not commonly used in practice now uh, what kind of examples uh, that can be asked uh, in the examination that we'll today only see what kind of examples but in the coming lectures we'll focus on how to solve this what kind of example is asked you can see the rate of rainfall for a successive 30 minutes period of a 4 hour storm are as follows so these are the values which are given right in centimeter per hour taking value of phi index as 4.5 cm per hour so phi index is given compute the following For what we have to compute total rainfall p total rainfall xs r w index plot the graph for the same okay very easy uh, uh, examples are there now second example again what is given for a catchment of 8.6 square kilometer area the mass cover of rainfall of 4 hour storm is given below the phi index is 0.8 cm per hour determine effective rainfall hydrograph and volume of runoff okay so the time in hour these values are given and the accumulated rainfall in cm it is given here okay the successive values are there so by using this uh, we will have to plot the hydrograph as well as we have to determine the volume of rainfall so here what is what are the value given it is here it is a phi index is given 0.8 cm per hour okay next is the rainfall rates for a successive 30 minutes intervals up to 4 hours is given below if surface runoff is 3.6 cm determine phi index if it is assumed to be in a range of 1.4 to 1.7 also determine w index so these values are again given as a previous example the the time is given in minutes and the rainfall intensity given in centimeter per hour this values are given so by using this we we'll have to uh, determine the phi index as well as w index so very simple examples that we are going to solve in the coming lectures but remember what kind of examples can be asked in the examination but not only that we we'll have to again uh, remember all the concepts as a um, professional uh, point of view as well because we are going to use this in the future right so friends uh, uh, that's all uh, from today's session but in the coming lectures we attend to try to go through all the lectures that we have gone through try to uh, assimilate the numerical uh, concept in that try to assimilate the formula that we have taken so that it is very easy to solve the examination so thank you very much once again for joining this today's session